this video we're going to take a look at a feature called column breaks. Uh, column break is something that you insert in your document when you want to move to the top of a new column. So just like a page break takes you to a new page, a column break takes you to a new column. So in order for this to make any sense, we are going to have to divide our document up into columns. So I'm using my Alice in Wonderland document again. I don't want the title page to be affected, so I'm going to go to my Layout tab and choose Columns. And go to More Columns down here and tell it that I want two columns, but not for the whole document, just from this point forward. So that won't mess up my cover page. So uh, now my document looks like this. And so let's say that I want uh, this text right here to get pushed up to the top of the next column. So um, I want to leave some space for something down here. So uh, there's two possibilities here. Uh, one of them works better than the other. First one we're going to look at is putting the cursor at the end of the previous paragraph. And this is on the Layout tab. It's under Breaks. And uh, just choose Column. Okay. Uh, when you do that, uh, because we're to the left of the paragraph mark, the paragraph mark actually got pushed up to the top of the next column. And that's probably not what you wanted. You probably wanted this line to be the first line on the page, not a blank line. Uh, but you do see down here at the bottom, uh, it says column break. And that only is showing up because we have our show hide button pushed in. If we get rid of that, uh, it's gone. We have no idea how we got to the top of this column. We don't even know if there's a paragraph mark up there. Uh, or if there's spaces or paragraph marks down here or whatever. So uh, yet another reason why you should keep this pushed in when you're working on your document. So that's it gets you to a new column, but you have to do a little bit of editing when you get there. You got to get rid of that to get this pushed up. And and another problem is if you're using an older version of Word and you had, actually I don't know if that, I think they fixed that. They did. If you had justified alignment here and you had a short line down here, it would really kind of spread everything out here and it looked really funny. And uh, they fixed that uh, like a version or two ago. So we don't have that problem anymore, but we still end up with this paragraph mark up here. And that's not what I really want. So I'm going to undo a couple of times. And the best way to do this is go to the beginning of the line and then go to your layout tab and choose breaks and insert a column break. And now that goes right up to the top. This down here uh, is visible. So it's real easy to see why you went up to the top of a new column. And that's that's about it. Uh, there is one other thing that I want to take a look at. And I want to find a line here that is almost at the end of a line. And let's go down here and let's do the same thing we did a minute ago. Uh, we will try to begin the or insert column break before the paragraph mark at the end of this line. So let's go up here to breaks. Let's insert a column break. And we get the same thing we did before. We don't really want that to be pushed up there. But uh, if you insert a column break at the end of a line instead of at the beginning of a line, and you are almost all the way across the line, then you don't see very much of that column break. You just see you know a few dots there, and they're so small it would be easy to overlook. So that's another problem with inserting a column break at the end of a line rather than at the beginning of the line. So when you want to go to a new column, put the cursor at the beginning of the line that you want to push down to the next column, and it'll work just fine.